Hello again. Today we are going to be talking about the chi-squared goodness of fit test. So let's get started. The steps to doing this are very, very similar to the student t-test that we talked about in an earlier video, but let's just review those. The first thing we're going to do is state our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. We are then going to choose our significance level and call it alpha. We will calculate the test statistic, which is now what I'm calling chi-squared calc, and that's going to be for our sample. We're going to calculate the p-value using a calculator. We are uh, going to reject our null hypothesis if our p-value is less than our value for alpha, and then we're going to write our conclusion in the context of the problem. So let's look at an example where we have data. There's a casino that is being accused of using a pair of loaded dice. That means that the dice are unevenly shaped so that some numbers are rolled more frequently than others. So to test this, what I did was um, I rolled that pair of dice 360 times, and here are the results. So in the first column, I have the observed number of times that a two was rolled, three was rolled, four was rolled, um, all the way up to 12, which is the highest you can roll. And then based on my knowledge of probability, um, I filled in the second column with how many times I should expect a two to be rolled, a three to be rolled, and so on. And that's all based on theoretical probability. All right, so that is the observed, and that is the expected. So now we're going to conduct a chi-squared goodness of fit test with a 5% significance level to see whether the dice are actually loaded. So according to step one, we state our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is just that, um, yes, the observed values are a little bit off, but not off enough for them to be uh, significant. So that means that the probability of rolling a two is still about one over 36. The probability of rolling a three is two out of 36, and so on until the probability of rolling a 12 is still one out of 36. So that's my null hypothesis, nothing's wrong. My alternative hypothesis is that at least one of these probabilities is not what it should be. So the probability of rolling a two with these dice is not one out of 36, or it's not even close enough to that or the probability of rolling a three is not close to being two out of 36, and so on. At least one of those would have to not be true in order for me to accept my alternative hypothesis. So my significance level, as always, is 5%, and that means that alpha is 0 0.05. So now I calculate the test statistic for the sample. So there's the formula for it. It is the sum of all of the differences between the observed frequency and the expected frequency squared over the observed frequency. So if you look at uh, two, for example, rolling a two, the observed frequency was 14 and the expected was 10. That's a difference of four. So for the first fraction, I have four squared out of 10. For the second row, rolling a three, the observed frequency was 23, and I only expected that to happen 20 times out of the 360. So the difference between those is three. So my second fraction is three squared out of 20. And that's how every fraction was created. So if I add all of those fractions together, I get 932 out of 300, which is 3.107. That is my x squared calc. Now I'm going to go to my p-value on my calculator. Using a Casio, again, I go to uh, option two, which is statistics, and I enter my observed values in list one and my expected values in list two. So I have 11 rows of data, and I press F3 because I am performing a test. It is a chi test, so I'm pressing F3 again. It is a goodness of fit test, so I'm pressing F1 for that option. And so now it's asking me for where is my observed list? Well, that's in list one. And where is the expected list? That's in list two. The degrees of freedom is 10 because remember degrees of freedom is basically the number of rows in your table minus one times the number of columns in your table minus one. Well, I have two columns and 11 rows. So 11 minus one times two minus one is 10. All right. All right, so then I press EXE after all of that. And I get that my P-value is 0.9788. 
So that is my p-value. Our significance level was 0 0.05. Now the um, p-value for the first time in all of these videos, uh, it is not less than 0 0.05. So I am going to accept my null hypothesis. What does that mean in the context of the problem? That means that the dice are not loaded and they are behaving as expected. So even though there were some variances uh, between what I observed and what I expected, these uh, dice can be considered fair dice and not loaded dice. All right, so let's talk about critical values for a second. You may be wondering what value of chi-squared gives me a p-value of exactly alpha. Well, that's called a critical chi-squared value. And uh, so you're usually given a table like this one um, if you don't have a calculator or even if you do. So uh, for step five, instead of rejecting the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than my alpha value, I can also reject it if my calculated chi-squared value is greater than or equal to my critical chi-squared value that the table gives me. So let's look at this again. I have my calculator output and I have my um, table. So what I notice is in the problem I had 10 degrees of freedom and I was using a significance level of 5%. So in the table I look at where these line up and they line up at 18.31. Um, and if I compare that to what my calculator gave as a chi-squared calculation, that's 3.107 approximately. So is my calculated chi-squared greater than or equal to my critical chi-squared calculation? And the answer to that is no. 3.107 is not greater than or equal to 18.31. So I just have another reason why I'm not going to reject my null hypothesis and I am going to accept my null hypothesis. And so that's just a quick look at how to use a chi-squared goodness of fit test. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.